Good evening and welcome to the April meeting of the Penfield Public Library Board of Trustees. We're happy to have you with us if you're joining us on Penfield TV or if you're watching us on YouTube. It's good to see you. Um, the first order is to approve the minutes from our previous meeting. Has anyone, does anyone have any comments, corrections? Move to approve. Rachel, mm -hmm. thank you. Is there a second? Megan, thank you very much. All in favor? Thank you. Minutes are approved. Um, Niraj is not here this evening, and he had asked Brett to do the finance report, and Brett let me know that late this afternoon that his wife was not well, and he was, he was going to be with her this evening. So we will skip that part of the finance, but I do have something to say when we get to the committee reports. Um, under public participation, there's nobody here from the um, Friends, but I do know that the Friends are looking for books for the book sale that will take place in September, the weekend after Labor Day. They, would re they really feel that this year, for some reason, they do not have as many books as they've had in the past. Mm. So if you're watching at home and you have books to donate, please bring them to the library. There are certain hours when the friends are there, but Rhonda has said that the staff will take the library or the books and give them to the friends so they can sort them and get them ready for the sale. Yes. Um, we do need to approve the financial report. We do need a motion to approve it. Okay. Did you want me to speak to it? If you want to speak to it, that would be great because I I had not looked at it. I had been looking at something else, Rhonda. Yes, so absolutely. That would be I'm wonderful. Happy to. Thank you. Um, so you know now we're three months into the year, and if you look at the financial report, you'll see we're well under the 33 percent mark that that we could be at. Um, well under it. So we're, we're doing very well. Total expense is only 20%, 20.7. Um, every, every, every category, every line item, we're below. So we are doing very well. We're right where we should be or lower on every line. Do you have any questions? I just have one. And yes. Why, why is that? Why are we doing, I mean, I shouldn't, I guess I shouldn't question it's why we're the doing the, so. the town pays their bills. You know, January is a very not much is done in January. It doesn't come into our report in January, so we're always kind of a little bit behind. Okay. But um, this is fine. We're good. Looks like it. Do we have a motion to approve the financial report? Megan, is there a second? Melissa, thank you. All in favor? It's adopted. Thank you very much. And we talked about the books. Linda, would you like to give us a report from the town? Sure. Um, as you all know, reassessment's taking place in our town. And one thing that's come up that is uh, to, to inform the public about what it all means is next Wednesday, April 27th, at 5.30 here in the auditorium, there's going to be a uh, discussion about what it all means by someone uh, I don't have his name in front of me, but it's somebody that does assessments and educates people about them. So if anybody had any questions, they could come here to talk to him. But if there's a lot of people, it can also it'll be on Zoom, so you can watch it live and, and, and call in. But that's all part of um, being as transparent as, as possible to get people to understand the whole process as it's going forward. So I want to bring that up because that just got set up you know, a few days ago, and it'll be next week. And um, otherwise, it's all these um, fun things coming up for the spring, you know, Good Neighbor Day in May and the bike rodeo. There's, there's things coming up to get us ready for spring. Um, Little League, you know, April 30th and so many exciting things. But uh, as far as the town goes, that's the primary thing right now, I think. Uh, it, well, I'd like you to know. I mean, you can see if you came in Columbus Crossing, which is the way I always come in, they're doing the sidewalks now out there. They're almost done. It's going to be next to the, the girls' uh, Little League field over there. So that's going to be very helpful for a lot of people as they uh, <laughs> find ways to get to the fields. 
Um, if you have any questions or anything, I'd be happy to uh, look into it. Or if I can answer, I will. There was, a, last fall, there was um, a group that had asked for the girls' little league facility to have indoor restrooms. Well, that, that hole, that's right there where the um, sidewalk, you know, that's, well, <laughs> we have numbers. We have numbers, estimates, what it's going to cost and everything. And um, I can't really address that, but I think there's some money coming in from the state to help with that. And, you know, we, we do want to do that for sure. Good. It's, it's a very positive thing. I also want to mention, because I talked to you about, you know, if you haven't signed up, the town supervisor does have a newsletter started up again. You know, we have a communications person now, and uh, so there's going to be a uh, monthly newsletter. You can sign up on the website. I sent you the link. So, you know, it's, um, it's, it'll be good because if, if things like I'm saying right now, you'll be able to read on a monthly basis. You know, we used to have that kind of thing with a we messenger like post back in the day. <laughs> you know, they don't have, newspaper doesn't do that anymore. Are you all interested in that? Because I'd be happy to send you the link that, that I think I signed up better communication. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I'll just send it out. And of course, you know, the library has a monthly newsletter as well. Right. I got that the other day. That's really good. I think, I think it's gotten good. Time, more timely. Yeah. yeah. That's really <laughs> good. We're adding new sections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like this one that just came out this month added um, a section called Did You Know? We're going to each month feature um, a service that the library provides that people sometimes just don't know about. Mm -hmm. Well, I like the one that said about you, if you're interested in starting a book club, talk to mm -hmm. somebody at the library. Right. Yeah, that's good. That was the newest one I just wrote. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's terrific. Thank you. It was good. And isn't it great to see that people are reading yes, it? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. That's it, unless you have something else. No. What time, what time is that? 5.30. Tom, no, the, yeah, the town assessment meeting is at 5.30? Mm -hmm. Right here. Or it'll, you know, it'll yeah. be the link you'll be able sure. to sign on. Under um, the committee reports for finance, um, last year we had um, hired Bonadio to recommend some changes in procedures in how we handled gifts and so forth to our Gift and Memorial Fund. And we have the report and we had approved hiring them, but I just want you to know that we have paid them and the bill was $8,968.75. And one of the things they had mentioned to us was that every time we have a bill, we should vote to pay it. And we have not done that. We do have a list of bills that we haven't. There are some, in some cases, we did not do call attention to things because they were in the category of employee appreciation. And so I would like to propose that we set aside, say, $1,000 for the calendar year to cover employee appreciation. And if we have any left over, that's great, but then there will be no surprises, and we don't have to mention to some in front of somebody at a meeting, we spent X amount on you, <laughs> which is, I believe, somewhat tacky. <laughs> but Embarrassing. Do you, it, is that agreeable to everyone? Could we have a motion? Yeah. Just mentioned that that's from the Gift and Memorial Fund. This is not coming from taxpayer funding. Correct. It's a separate fund. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Yes. That is. That is not. There's no. There are no taxpayer dollars involved with this money. It, mm -hmm. Would somebody like to? Judy? I so move that we adopt a thousand dollars to go into an account that we can use for employee appreciation. Thank you. Is there a second? Denise, thank you. All in favor? Okay. Uh, on behalf of our wonderful staff, I just want to thank you. I think it will mean a lot to them. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that's good. I mean, and that way things can be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Rachel, do you have anything for personnel? No, nothing new. Okay. Um, strategic planning. Mm -hmm. Rhonda and Melissa, would you like to? 
Um, so strategic planning has been meeting. Um, we met actually just a week ago with uh, staff members and Rhonda. Rhonda's been doing a great job uh, sort of creating the outline for our strategic plan and we're going to open it up to the community now for uh, feedback. So in May we're going to have one night where we invite the community to come out and share their thoughts and explain to them the process and what we're hoping to do. And we're going to also offer um, an online option for people who can't attend in person uh, later in the month. Um, and we're going to use that, their feedback to help us as we put the plan together. Um, do you have anything else you want to add, Rhonda? We'll also put down a, put out a, a survey, survey for those who yes. can't attend either virtually mm -hmm. or in person, but do want to lend their, their opinions to us, which we appreciate. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'd like to add about the survey, when we did a community survey in the summer, we had a question on there about the Friends. And we asked people if they wanted to know more about the Friends to please provide their name and their email. And about 600 people wrote in. And then they received an email from the Friends organization. And out of that, I think 60 or 70 people wrote back and said they were interested and have followed through. Mm -hmm. We would like to do that with the foundation. The foundation, at the Penfield Public Library Foundation is a long-term investment for, in the future of the library. And they are looking to raise significant funds for the library's future and for its needs. And so as part of this survey, I think it would be nice to include a question are you interested in learning more about the Penfield Public Library Foundation? And if so, please give us your name and email. And I hope they have as many responses as the friends did. Yes. And we can put out we can put out something for the people who come in person and we can send something to those who attend virtually to just widen that, that audience a little bit. Yes, I think that's a great idea. Well we also put in um, a small abbreviated description of what the foundation does as opposed to what the friends do. I think that can sometimes be confusing. That's an excellent point, that. Judy. That's, that's really, that's good. We can do that for sure. Um, there, we don't have anything on bylaws right now. I believe the, the only thing that we do have, um, and this was not sent out prior to the meeting, so we'll have to um, vote on it next month. But we did at our last meeting uh, discuss a very minor change to the employee identification. Yes. policy um, so we just added in there that staff when they are you know having their name badge created will have the choice to have their first name only displayed on their badge their first and last name or their chosen honorific mr mrs ms etc um, with either their first or last name and that they will communicate what that choice is uh, to Rhonda so that their name badge can be created with their chosen name um, so we will send that out so that everyone can just review that again it's just one very minor addition um, but then we'll be ready to vote on that next month Month. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Do we have anything under communications, Denise? Okay. And now we come to Rhonda's report. Um, great. So um, I don't know if you noticed the people count. 14,840 people came. That is an 88% increase over one year ago. So, wow. More and more people are coming into the building, more and more people are checking out items, and uh, more and more people are coming to our programs. We're definitely um, seeing an increase, and we're very happy about that. Um, you should also know that the Town Facilities Department has really stepped up. We, we did lose our cleaner this month, but the Town Facilities Department has been in cleaning every single day, and we appreciate that. This is until they find a new cleaner, but it's been now three, four weeks, and. Um, honestly, the library is, is looking fantastic. They've also painted some walls, and they've fixed a couple of things around the library. It looks really good. Um, we celebrated National Library Week by sending out an email blast to the 6,000 expired library card holders, most of whom I'm, I'm sure have not been coming in because of the pandemic. But we, we have seen an uptick in people coming in to um, update their library card, and we're giving them a little gift in appreciation. 
Um, we did receive a local grant um, in the amount of $8,111. It must be spent on materials that circulate. And the grant requirements stipulate that the donor's name remain private. It is possible, though, that we'll have the um, an equivalent grant again the next year. But part of the grant does also say that we cannot use this money as part of our annual budget, that we cannot decrease our material bu materials budget in anticipation of this grant, that this is meant as an extra amount of money. So um, we can't use it for our budget, but it's a very nice uh, bonus for us. Um, we are working on the 80th anniversary committee, which will co come up under new business. I'll talk about that. And let's see, we've been to meetings. <laughs> we've had a lot of meetings. <laughs> Um, we went over to the rec department one day. It was um, two of the librarians and I went over and spoke to the seniors at the rec department on March 31st. It was such a nice gathering, really um, just a special hour that we spent with them. Lovely. One of our longtime senior library clerks, Kathleen, is retiring at the end of the month, and we're going to miss her. She's been with the library since 1998. So that's a huge loss, but she's going to come back as a volunteer. Um, also, I want, to, I want to just send a really big thank you to the town. We have given out over 1,500 COVID-free test kits. Wow. And just about every week we're giving out another 200, and we still have quite a few boxes left. If anybody wants to come down to the library to pick some up, we're asking it's two boxes or four tests. Each time you come in, you can take those. Um, and that's basically it. Sounds like you've had a very active month. It has been very busy, <laughs> and that's good. Can you talk a little bit about Friday Club? I see that I'm not familiar with it. I know I'm a trustee and I'm supposed to be, but I <laughs> don't know it. Um, well, I'm probably not the best person to speak about it. Maybe, Barbara, you should. But the Friday Club is a group of women who came together in 1941-42 to what? create a library. Mm -hmm. They've been a group all of these years, and they have promised to speak during our 80th anniversary celebration at a tea, a high tea party that we're going to give. And um, it's, 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 a, it's no longer as large a group, it's a smaller group, but um, we're hoping that they, Barbara and I are trying to talk them into continu continuing, and we're hoping that the high tea might bring some new members into the group. It was, I just want to say, it was started before 1941. Did it, was, it? It started in the 30s, and I'm not sure exactly when, and it was when Penfield was really pretty remote from downtown. And um, these were women who had been educated or were just interested in learning, and they would get together every other Friday afternoon, and they read books and did book reports to each other, or they would research a topic that people were interested in and kind of present their findings. And of course, there was either lunch or dessert involved. And when we were on the verge of going into World War II, I think even before, the, um, there was gas rationing. And so trips to the library in downtown Rochester were really a luxury. And they thought, wouldn't it be nice if we had one in Penfield? And that was sort of the impetus for starting the library. And the first location is a building that no longer exists and was a little yellow house at the corner of Liberty Street and Five Mile Line Road. And it wasn't even a house. And there's a description in the Friday Club has all of these documents about the founding and what it was like. There was a coal stove. And the woman who was the first librarian who was a volunteer had her husband go in. And he, he got the stove going in the wintertime. And it was kind of scary. And they were only there for a couple <coughs> of years. But the house was torn down to put up the dentist office that's there on the corner. And then they had two other locations before they moved to the former town hall on Five Mile Line Road. But anyhow, yes, we are hoping that they might continue. And we'll see how that works out. Yes. That answer your question. <laughs> the it is that more than you wanted question. to know? <laughs> no, it's fine. Well, if you come to high tea on September, 
Let's see. 23rd. September 23rd. You will learn more. <laughs> okay. I'll put it on my calendar. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions for Rhonda? Any observations? Well, thank you very much. And now we are going into new business. And um, I think all of these items are yours. Yes. Um, so the 2021 community report, um, I, I made you an 8.5 by, by 14, so you can see it. It was designed to be on, on our website. So. In print, it looks like the print is a little small, but on our website, it looks better. And of course, on our website, you can make it larger. We, these statistics are all taken from our annual state report, which we send in. Um, we have so many statistics that I think are, are um, an indication of how well loved this library is in this community, because in 2021, for the most part, we were still in the middle of a pandemic. And even so, our numbers are good. And I, I, you know, if you just look at the number of people who came into the library, 114,000 people during a pandemic came into our library, 15,000 reference questions, 128,000 visits to our website to find out what they can access. Um, the items borrowed, 231,000 items were borrowed that year. It also includes program statistics, summer reading game statistics. Um, not that many people realize that we actually go out to senior living facilities and deliver books. Those statistics are on this report. It's, it's just a, a snapshot of all the services that the library provides to the community. So I wanted to get as many statistics as possible on here. Miriam did an amazing job putting this together. I think it's very attractive. Um, but if you approve it, um, it will go on our website and, and everybody can see it. And, and a paper will copy will be on our bulletin board as well, of course, for those who don't have computer access. Are you looking for approval for this? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? Megan, thank you. Is there a second? Melissa, all in favor of adopting this for the folks at home? We'll have to wait until it's... <laughs> with motion passed. That Thank you great. so much. Very colorful. Mm -hmm. that looks yeah, she, yeah, I think it looks she's great. She's so talented. She really is. I mean. Well, I think she should because mm -hmm. it has an enormous amount of information. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That really tells you yeah. the true workings of the library. Which is, which is why you put out a community report. You want everybody to realize how valuable we are. Mm -hmm. And, and how many services we provide, maybe you don't realize we provide, but this is, look at all we do. Yeah. Well, yeah. it's such a phenomenal number of items circulated mm -hmm. that I think it's amazing. And I like the way she did it with the colors so you can see what's representative Thank of you. each group. I, I, would, I will forward your compliments because she does do, she works very hard. Yeah, it looks yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah, she's very talented. Mm -hmm. So the next um, item on the new business is the 80th anniversary celebration. So um, what I'm asking for is, a, is an amount um, of money from the Gift and Memorial Fund to celebrate the 80th anniversary. As Barbara came up with the idea, 80 years in, you know, in our community, we should celebrate. Why not? Um, but of course, these celebrations do cost money. So I made a list of the things that the staff has come up with. Um, have, has planned, started to plan actually, because we don't know if we have the funding yet. But once we know we have funding, we'll continue to plan. So what we hope to have the week of September 18th, um, Sunday we're looking for a family event with some children's entertainment and snacks and teen, um, teens will come and volunteer and we'll do crafts and it's just like a family day, hopefully outside, but if it rains, we did reserve the community room. Wednesday, we're going to have a book talk on a 1942 bestseller. We haven't decided what book yet. Thursday, we're going to have movie night for a 1942 movie, but we haven't picked which one yet. <laughs> Friday is going to be our very, and this is what I'm most excited about, the high tea with the Friday Club, because um, some of the members of the Friday Club came in and spoke to Barbara and me, and 
oh, what lovely women they were. And yes. it was just a very nice time. Oh, and Kim came. Kim Catal I cannot pronounce Kim's last name. Catalina. I can't either. Um, she's a member, a member, of, member of, the of the Friday, Friday Club. Friday. Yes. So we asked her to come and join us. And that was, that was just a very nice hour we spent with these women. Um, they had a lot of ideas of how we could celebrate our history. And um, they are volunteering to come to the high tea and talk about our library history. They had a play that they wrote many, many years ago. For the and, 50th. Mm -hmm, and Stephanie, our young adult librarian, is in contact with the high school drama coach, or teacher, probably, um, to find out whether they, they'd be willing to come and act it out. So that oh, that really would be fun, right? so yeah. much yes. fun. Costume, How cute is that? Yeah. Yes. So a high tea, of course, you know, it means real tea and real scones and maybe little finger sandwiches. Um, then we'll have an Instagram challenge where we're going to ask the community members who are interested in Instagram, who like to do social media, to we'll pick out maybe five local history places, um, ask them to snap a picture of themselves with this statue or building maybe holding a library book. I don't know. We, we have to work that out and then send it to us and perhaps win a prize. So we're asking for, oh, oh, of course, I'm sorry. We do want a limited edition giveaway. We want anybody who comes to the library with a, li a Penfield library card and checks out a book that month to come in and either get, we're thinking maybe a pad with a, a special logo um, or a mug or so, just something that people can keep forever to celebrate our 80 years. And so. If, you know, all of this costs money. So I'm asking for between 2000 and 2500 for everything included to celebrate our 80 years. What do you think? From the Gift and Memorial Fund. Right. No taxpayer funding will be allocated for this. It's all from <laughs> donations. <laughs> no, I, I think this looks really like a wonderful week mm -hmm. to celebrate the library. And the weather's always generally is really nice that time of year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anybody want to? I'll make a motion. That we um, adopt this um, Rhonda's recommendation and provide the funding for a week-long celebration, celebrating 80 years of community service from the library. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. I don't know that we need a special logo, but. We'll use our logo and put maybe 1942 through? 2020. I mean, I don't want to mess up our logo. I know it's the logo. <laughs> we can we don't. That is a little line underneath. Perhaps we can do yeah. something. Yeah. yeah. Maybe just, you know, celebrating 80 years is fine celebrating as well. Celebrating 80 years. Yes, yes. Well, I think it's a great way to celebrate our the new brand of the library mm -hmm. um, and push, you know, the new ideas and, and a new century of ideas mm -hmm. forth. So... I don't know. I'm for it. So. Is there a yeah. second? Judy? Or sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All in favor? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, all of these celebrations also bring new library users to, our, to us. So mm -hmm. it's just highlighting our services and telling everybody that we're here and we want, we want to provide whatever people need at this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that's great to get... And something outside would certainly be visible. Mm -hmm. And I think mm -hmm. that there would be people who would see it and just say, oh, what's going on there? And then. And if I might, I, I mentioned to Rhonda, you know, and I mentioned to you too, that whole thing about the county is, even though it was last year, it was their bicentennial, the county's celebrating it this year. And they only ask every town doing something um, to, to advertise their history or whatever, mm -hmm. to send the information to visit Rochester so everyone will be aware of what's happening in Penfield. And this is a perfect one to um, definitely get in there for, mm -hmm. you know, 80 years of Penfield Library. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Linda. Just, yeah. yeah, so that would be something for probably Miriam to mm -hmm. send off or whoever you decide. And then you want to talk about the code of conduct. Yes. Um, so in the past, we, we, we had a list of do's and don'ts, but we didn't have an official code of conduct. And every library does need a code of conduct because we're a place for everyone. And so in any community um, that welcomes everyone, we need some just very basic rules. So 
our code of con the code of conduct draft that I sent out starts with a very inclusive statement that you know the Penfield Public Library welcomes everyone. Everybody is invited. Everybody is welcome to use our materials. Everybody is welcome to use our computers. Everybody is welcome to partake of our services. But in order for everybody to enjoy our services, we have to have some very basic rules. Um, so then you know you have your list of rules, you know, which I sent to you. It's just basic respect for each other. Um, Use the library materials and property as intended. Wear a shirt and shoes. <laughs> and um, these are very, very basic. And um, you would think that we don't have to have it in print, which is I, what I imagine people thought before you know, with the other directors. They didn't even need it. But you do need it, because people do come in. And they do come in with children without shoes. And there are staples on the floor and thumbtacks on the floor. And we, we just need some basic yeah. Rules, we could say, this is our code of conduct. Can you please you know, follow these basic rules? There's nothing in here that I think anybody would object to. We can't have unattended backpacks or suitcases in these days, obviously. We can't have anybody come in with alcohol or anything illegal. Um, no smoking is a New York state law within 100 feet of the entrance, so that's listed. Um, and then we, we just ask that people don't come in and take pictures or, or videos of our patrons while they're working and doing their personal business. So very, very basic. Um, at the end, it does say that if you don't adhere to our rules of conduct, you know, you may be asked to leave the library. And it does mention the fact that we do have security cameras and that the information that we can pull from the, the, the footage that we can pull might be used to ban somebody. Um, we want people to know what we have in place. and. Uh, and that's pretty much it. How are you going to um, disseminate this? Or will it be disseminated? Will it be posted? It doesn't have to be. It will be posted, absolutely. And it's only brought to somebody's attention if we see a violation. And of course, we first very gently suggest that you know, a parent put the shoes on the child. Very, you know, just, it, this isn't safe. I'm really sorry. I understand you're in and out, but can you just put some shoes on your child? That's, it's very, very gentle. We don't want to make anybody feel uncomfortable. It's only when somebody resists and says no that we can point this out and explain why we have it. Does it need to be displayed publicly? Like yes. even on the bulletin board? Yes, it will be on the bulletin oh, board. Oh, okay. And, and we will have a copy to hand over in case of need. Okay. Well, hopefully that won't happen. Well, I mean, we're in a public place. It will happen. It's going yes. to happen. It, you know, but it's all about attitude. We, we, we want to be inclusive. We're, we're not trying to tell somebody not to do something. We're just trying to show them how it has to be done for our building. What do you need from us? I, I do need um, a motion and a second to approve this new policy. It is a policy. Okay. Somebody like to I'll move to adopt this policy? Melissa, thank you. Megan will second. All in favor of adopting the code of conduct? Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the fourth item of new business is the, is the strategic plan, which we've already discussed. Mm -hmm. So we don't need any vote or anything on that. We're fine. So I'm, I'm at the end of my four items. Mm -hmm. OK. Are there any questions for Rhonda on any of these items? Great. And I don't believe we have any continuing business, which brings us up to the claims payment. Oh, and that's me. That would be you. <laughs> um, I'd like to um, make a motion to approve the vouchers uh, for this month of $21,700 Seventeen dollars and three cents. I have somebody second. <coughs> Denise, thank you. And all in favor? Okay. And I believe after you, it's Jen McCrory, and I will write to Jen and tell okay. her she does the vouchers next month. Does anyone else have any business or any questions, anything to discuss about the library? I was just wondering after attending this NILA uh, trustees book club, um, they talk a great deal about 
updating policies and having policies for. So I don't know how up to date our, or how often we've reviewed our policies and if they are generally all up to date. I, I don't know who. Our policies were on a schedule of being updated every, every three five. years. Oh, three. And the requirement is every five. So our policy. Well, because they bring up some really good points based on the, you know, the political um, things that are going on. And um, I think you went to a, a meeting about book literacy and that kind of thing. So I'm just, I was just curious. Because no, they keep piling on, you know, um, code of conduct, not only code of conduct, but um, ethics, um, a policy for ethics. And I think I've read our policies, but there's. Uh, well, the lot. policy on ethics, I thought that, that was very interesting. It was very interesting. Because we have all been asked to sign an ethics statement that said you have no conflict of interest and you're going to do all these things. But. The ethics statement can be updated at any time, and whether you sign it or not, you are obligated to follow those that policy. Mm -hmm. And I think that we're I think we're pretty good with that. But mm -hmm. you know, I was just you know because they said, can somebody be dismissed as a trustee for not signing the um, ethics policy? And the answer is no. But by not following it. You know, because that's implicit in being a trustee that you're going to be ethical. So you don't. Well, they talked a lot about the First Amendment tonight and about people's freedom of of rights to, you know, choose book or bring books um, up for discussion. And so I, and they talked a lot about the policies that would be important to take another look at now rather than when the, if a situation arises. So they I also just started off with the statement that free people are free to read whatever they want. Right. <laughs> so yeah, that was their mantra I th tonight. And I thought it was interesting in discussing the, you know, the, the people who challenge what's on the shelves. The one of the panelists said, you know, you might have a policy and you might say, oh, well, we're just going to deal with this in the regular routine way. But she said, when you think about it, there's always a different way of looking at something. And she said, you might learn something. You might learn how somebody else is thinking. And I thought well, that was really a good point because sometimes we all get comfortable with our own beliefs and we should try to think of them from somebody else's point of view. Right, right. But, yeah, I did you send learn you the a somewhat revised procedure this month. Did you get it? I, I did, probably. Okay. Okay. I read it. I read a lot. Because it includes the policy, uh, how, how we choose our materials, it includes that, which is something we would hand over to somebody if they object to an item. And it includes our procedure, what we do when somebody objects to an item. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's those kinds of things. I was just right. wondering how when we had updated something like that. Right. I'm still learning my way right. through this. So the procedure was updated this month after that meeting right. that we went to from mm -hmm. MCLS. It was a very good meeting and it made me look for these forms and interestingly, these forms were created at some point in the past, but when we went to look for them, we couldn't find them. So I just wrote them from scratch. I didn't have any old one. We couldn't find the old ones. So it has been, I suppose, a long time since somebody has objected to one of our items, um, which is good, which is great. But we always have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. So I did write one. Um, I did send it to all of you. I did yes, I got it. it with the staff. Um, and now that we have the code of conduct, the three pieces of paper will be to stapled together and put in a file at the reference desk for when this happens. But you know, the board should be aware that you know, the first step is to come to me. Right. And my staff and I will review the item and, and speak to the person who complained. And, or I shouldn't say complained, who um, expressed, expressed an opinion. Complain is a, is a negative term. Um, 
and we will communicate. But if that person doesn't like our answer, they will come to the board members, or they, and, they can, and they have the right to come to a board meeting to discuss this item. So we all should know what the procedure is. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, and it talk, they talked um, about protecting the patron in a very respectful way, but also respecting the rules and understanding where the staff training needs to come in a little right. bit on that. So um, to keep everybody safe. Absolutely. And, and feeling welcome in the building. Right. And being able to be respectful to everyone mm -hmm. at the same time. Can we vote on this? It's been moved and seconded. Did we vote? I'm sorry, I, I don't um, think we did. It was just a discussion. It's There's just no, a discussion. No we did not have to adopt anything. Okay. Right. In that case, if there's no further business, do we have a motion to adjourn? Judy and Melissa seconded. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching.